Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome back to part 3 of rebuilding my CNC machine. In this episode I'll be installing the Z-axis onto the machine. And the reason I say installing and not building is because as a departure from normal I went out and purchased a pre-made Z-axis. Yeah boo to you too. Why did I go out and buy one instead of making it? Well, I worked out by the time I brought the linear rails, the bearings, the ball screws, the extrusions I wanted, uh, machined up the aluminium parts, it was pretty much going to cost me as much as just buying one off the shelf. So I decided to go that way instead. So all I need to do now is attach that to the X carriage I made in the last episode and get it installed on the machine. Installing the new X carriage that we made in the last episode is going to be relatively simple. I've already installed T nuts into the back of this here, so really all I need to do is bolt it in place. I'm only going to put one bolt in the centre, and for that I'm just going to use these here six millimeter bolts and I'm using bolts rather than the torque head uh, screws because I want to be able to get a, uh, a spanner in here from behind so that I can uh, release and adjust its height so for these ones here the ones on the edge all I have to do is push the t-nut up and install the nut like so Now to get maximum travel on this here, I need to set it about here. I could come a little bit lower, but I'm just going to leave it 25mm or an inch up from the bottom here. I'll just square this up roughly in the meantime, like so. I'll need to ultimately square this once it's in uh, the machine. But uh, this will be a good start. I'm just going to tighten up these ones here. I'll have access to these. Uh, six around the outside here. here. Uh, the one in the center I will still have access to, but it won't be as easy as the others. So um, I'll just leave that one loose in the meantime because I know I am going to have to revisit this. And here installed in the bearings here are those little plastic pieces I mentioned last time. They stop the ball bearings from coming out. Okay, so we've now reached my least favourite part of this entire build. Basically just sliding this here onto the X uh, rail here. If I screw this up and all those ball bearings get loose, it'll be at least a month before I can get replacement uh, linear bearings to continue on. It really doesn't bear thinking about. Now to help, uh, what I've done is I've immobilised this carriage so it can't move uh, backwards and forwards on me while I'm putting it in. As I push it in, the little plastic holders, bearing holders will slide out and once it starts it should be pretty simple. It should just continue sliding its way on. We already know that the carriage slides nicely onto this rail so um, it shouldn't be a major problem. All I have to do is initially get it lined up properly. Well, I can't put it off any longer. Here we go. So, there's the first plastic bearing holders coming out, and there's the second. Makes me wonder what I was worried about. Although, I probably shouldn't have pulled them out as they were coming along. I should just let them fall to the ground. That way I would definitely uh, be, una be un unable to lose bearings. But it's in place and let's hope it never has to come off again. Now to ensure that we don't have an accident and accidentally uh, let it slide off the end there. I've left the last uh, bolt out of each end of this rail here. And I'm just putting some cable ties in like so and they will act as a hard limit stop to stop the carriage coming this way here. 
So now this is the perfect time to attach the spindle clamp here. I've already been through and I've drilled these holes into it, which perfectly match the ones here. I'm going to keep this as low as possible on this plate here so that I have maximum travel for my spindle. Also machined up this plate here, put holes in it, and uh, that will just sit under between the uh, spindle mount here and the back plate here. That's to give me an extra 10 millimeters of clearance here so that uh, my dust shoe can fit onto it and pull right up without getting in the way. So mounting this should be relatively simple. I've got the bolts, just put them in like so. Hold it in place and uh, tighten up the bolts. Now again, I'm not going to go overboard and try and square this up perfectly as well because I need to get uh, do that once uh, it's all set up. Now one thing that concerns me is this is relatively easy to move. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen when I put a spindle on it, but I know a good way of finding out. I'll just go and grab the spindle, put it in, and we'll see if the whole thing plummets to the table because that's one concern I do have. So here's the spindle I'll be using. And the more observant of you will notice, this is not my original spindle. My old one started making a few noises that I was not very happy about. So I decided I'd buy another one. At some stage I'll pull the old one apart. And uh, have a look inside it and see what, uh, see what there is to see. Okay, well, it, it doesn't exactly inspire me with confidence once it starts moving down. It can start keep moving down, but I'm hoping that the motor will be able to stop that from plummeting the, just the uh, detent uh, from the motor. Only time will tell and only the motor will tell so uh, one of the next jobs is to get the motor fitted however i've got a small problem there i do not have a coupler to go between here and the motor i brought one but it's too short they all seem to be a standard length so i'm going to have to make one so i'll start by putting a piece of acetal into the chuck here and it's just a little bit more than two inches long so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to face it off. Yep, that looks pretty good. So next I'm going to take a, uh, a center point drill here. And I'm just going to... Uh, just mark the centre of it. And now I'm going to follow that through with a quarter inch drill bit. good start this lathe is older than I am it's one I used to play with when I was a youngster so next I need a 10 millimeter drill I need this to go halfway. So to get the halfway point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a, put a mark on here, and I'm going to come back 
my 25 millimeters. So basically if I start here and wind in that 25 millimeters, I'll be halfway. So there's halfway, I'll go a fraction past it, but that's basically it. Right, we can now take the acetal out and we need to face off the back edge and make it exactly uh, 51 millimeters long. And by exact, I mean uh, roughly. There we are, 51 millimeters long. So now, uh, I might just make this a little bit thinner down this end here where it clamps around at the motor end because I'm clamping a lot of material here. Uh, it's not so bad at this end, but uh, on this end I'm, I think I'm clamping a bit too much. So I'll uh, measure down my one inch or halfway. And I'll just reduce the diameter of that down a little bit more. Okay, so the couple is now in and fitted. Unfortunately, I lost some of my footage. So um, I, while I can show you me fitting it, that's about it. I didn't show how they were completed. So here is my earlier coupler. And to complete it, what I had to do is I had to put a saw cut all the way through from top to bottom. And that allows me to clamp it around the two shafts. I also need to put a saw cut across the center here uh, that only goes half of the way through. That gives me the side-to-side -side flexing, should any be necessary. So I'm holding it in place with these hose clamps, one at the top, one at the bottom. Now, they're not very elegant, I'm first to admit but they are very effective they really do hold and are far better in my opinion anyway than trying to use set screws okay now the good thing is now that this is installed and this motor is attached this here no longer wants to drop like it did i can still make it move but not like it was before it's not going to drop like a stone as we saw earlier for which i'm immensely grateful well that's about where i'm going to leave it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it will join me for part four all that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys later cheers <laughs>